Oh dear, you must be thinking of contortionist in the circus. <laughs> oh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. He's the whole circus. Hi, welcome back to the LP of uh, Great Ace Attorney Chronicles Part 1, I guess. So, we shall begin with conversing with Mr. Roy Lot, I guess. Oh! I do not want to talk. Leave my cabin now. It is going terribly. We're not getting anywhere here. I agree. But there may be someone else who can help. Like who? Or why is he there? Perhaps that great detective could get somewhere with Mr. Roylot, maybe? Is he taking notes? I don't know. Mr. Roylot. Uh, is it gonna be the same? Alright, okay. Okay, okay, I, I getcha, I getcha. Alright. Uh, back, 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 back. Back, 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 back. Back, 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 back. Oh, okay. Examine then. Will he stop us if we do this? Okay, he will. Alright, I get you, I get you. I get... If you hear birds screaming, that's because I'm recording this in the morning. Kinda morning. Um, yes, I guess. I guess if I was in his shoes, I wouldn't let people look at my back. Anyway. Right, so um, we'll get Sholmes first then. Um, do you have a moment please, Mr. Sholmes? I don't know why there are birds right outside my window, they're very loud. You need to only address me as Sholmes. That's what I just said, didn't I? Isn't it? Well, uh, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? Why? I was resting, of course. I thought you were taking notes. Resting? Resting? Indeed, I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great powers of detection in detection into service? Oh! And it would seem that the hour is upon us now. Or you could have made your own first move. No one's stopping you from doing that. Am I mistaken? Well, um, not... no... oh, sorry. Well, um, no, actually, you're spot on for once. Observe closely. I want to like him, but he was gonna get it, redeem himself first, I guess. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roylot, is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret, no? Why? The truth, of course. Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the rush. I, I was gonna point that out too. Right. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he got so closely exposed? Would you like to look witness this? it? Yes! Oh yes, please. Well then, what are you are about to see may as well astound you. May well astound you. For I am about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. Is it a function? Could this man be a more hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From time to time, it occurs to me. He's a fellow dubious on account of his Russianness, or Russian on account of his dubious. I have no idea what you're talking about. I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you or anyone. That's right. And Mr. Sholmes. I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting. But I once read, it is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Yeah. Good stuff. Shh! I must have complete silence. What are you doing? Why are you peering at my face like that? I don't know what voice to give him, but yeah. Oh, just as I thought. 
Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. Hmm. There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylot, I have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. What? What do you mean? Number one. Your true identity is that of a villain. I'm... yeah. Isn't those shirts you're about to end the existence of something most dear? Are you not? Huh? And number two. The other conclusion I have drawn. You are, at this very moment no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Even if that beard your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you have been discovered. Does it not? Oh, Naruhoda-san, I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Shom's great deductions in my own eyes. That was a great deduction. Nothing can de deceive Mr. Shom's. In a single glance, you can deduce all there is to know about the person. What? Oh, oh, that sounds good. What? What ineffable twa twaddle? What ineffable twaddle? Oh, yes. I've read about it in countless times in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the colour has drained from Mr. Roylott's face. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Shom's conclusions were right. How? How could you? How could I possibly know such things that you wish to say? Uh... Very well then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how was it, how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So I cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. Okay. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylott. Obviously, what catches the eye in the first place? Is there shears? Yeah. There's only no much pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want to with such an implement? The answer is of course, staring in the face, his beard. You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you spot. No, something flashed, but I didn't see, I wasn't looking there. So moving on. The question then back to is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylott? Because the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regarding, if you will, this morning's newspaper, in particular, the fascinating front page article, which it would appear you have read also, Mr. Roylott. Hmm. But the build looks different, actually. It looks different. I'm sure you need no further ref clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity. Oh, it's a question mark. It's an article about the revolutionary. So it was wrong. So it's not about the revolutionary. Gotcha, gotcha. Wait, wait. Why am I here? I need to stop pressing the wrong key. Yeah, it looks different. See that? As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses an extremely copious beard. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. Oh, but we heard a woman's voice, right? I think it's... Actually, we heard a woman's voice and I don't see any other person here, so I assume it's a woman. I don't think that bag can contain a woman. I think this person is a woman. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand? I think he's wrong. I played enough Phoenix right. Hey, certainly. I'm better than Shams. <laughs> now, as for my, my second conclusion. 
you are at this very moment on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime over there. The back? Oh yes, what what are we looking at? What are we looking at? Take an unawares, people have a press pen CT to let your eyes through, you see. Can I show you do I speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth? Ah yes, the back, the trunk. The proof of your crime sits before our eyes. Yes, the travelling case. See, question mark again. It has nothing to do with anything. Okay. It is time I think that the case be open and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse. Stole away, isn't it? It's a stole away. I see. That's it. That's why she's she. I mean, I assumed already it's a she, but okay. It's a stole away pet, maybe. By my, there's no way a woman can fit in there. No, no. No, don't be... <laughs> yeah, don't be absurd. What, pray, would it be the identity of this young lady in the travelling case? Look at it, look at it. Roy Lord is reacting. We're not well suited to the life of crime, are we? You careless... I am not pronouncing that. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glass to find the answer. Newspaper. We need to see other articles in the newspaper, I think. For me, there is another most stimulating article. If we turn from the fling revolutionary to the back page. Did he just... Did he just... Oh my god. Did he just come to the correct deduction from nothing? Renowned prima ballerina of the it's a say it's a lady of the Nova Witch. Nova Witch Nova I'm sorry. Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to what but one conclusion. Oh you think oh sorry, you think she's in the case. Your crime is that of abduction and according to the article the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova. Thus concludes her Lokshom's great deduction of the Russian enigma, Elibensky. So Satuhan, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing much, so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Shom's brilliant deductions, you know. But that did seem a little different somehow. Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes. Could you come over here a moment? Give me one moment. Pray, what can I do for you? One moment. Right, I'm back. It's about your deductions. Would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, there's a newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. Yeah. Ah, yes, I recall a discussion earlier, and at that time, I believe I told you. That the man is a revolutionary. Well able to revolutionize his own appearance. In fairness to Mr. Shams, Mr. Roylott does look more like this man than you do. That's not the point. And another thing, the part about him without the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling revolution, revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance, it is too small, clearly. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old into that case even if you push really hard. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady is fifteen. No, I didn't know. How could I? Um, well, if she's fifteen and ten years old, Papa will be poking out from the case. Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. 
a troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain life liveness in their bodies. Vinegar? That's such a sour punch. It would seem. It would surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines. Why is it so hard to read it? Oh dear, you must be thinking of contortionists in the circus. <laughs> Ah, oh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. He's the whole circus. Mr. Naruhodo, something's occurred to me about Mr. Shom's deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. Why are you still defending him, Susato? His eyes cut to the heart of a metal almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and his logic. That seems a little off. Your idea of a little or a little, maybe a little of itself, Mr. Sato. It's just one or two keywords in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Switch some keywords in his deductions. We can do that. Yes, but very tactfully. I feel sure if we could do that. What? We would unlocked the true genius of Mr. Shom's great deduction. Precisely the thought he was listening. Precisely the thought that was going through my mind. This man is a lot of work. At times I wonder how anyone puts up with me. Me too. It's not that funny. Me and Rinosuke, same person. Oh, and you, my good fella. Take a moment to look at your wrist. Am I free? Am I free? Yes! When did you free them? Where are your handcuffs? Huh? How how did I feel I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our dance of deduction? I don't believe it. Mr. Shones, you are a marvel. Then don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrist when we are finished. I'm not worried. I in fact I'd rather stay like this. Yeah. Can you do that? So let us begin. Herlock Shums is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. So the dubious looking Russian Mr. Roylot obviously what catches in the eye in the first- Okay, I think I don't need to read this, right? Yeah, okay. Shears. Shears are correct. I, here's the part where the question marks comes out, I think. The beard, right? Yeah, that, that part, that part. What do I do with that? Yep. I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I don't think it's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. Doesn't seem to be reading, sitting right with Mr. Rylight either. Which means I suppose that deduction is wrong. Switch a keyword. So if it's not the beard, I think we should start by taking a long hard look at Mr. Rylight. I wonder if it's I wonder if it's really his beard. Hmm. So if it's not his beard, what would it be? But anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around in that last uh, sentence. What exactly was Mr. Roylot going to use those enormous shears for? Oh, I can I turn around? Oh. Oh. Take head. I'm. Wait. Wait, those are hair. That's a hair. That's a hair. Wow. What's why again? Yes. Okay. You are on the verge of using okay to cut the golden locks. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you spot. Indeed. You have identified the precise detail I was intending to expose, sure. Such lush golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. 
You're not a man at all, you're a woman. And judging from the length and sheen of your hair. One still very much in her youth. Oh no! If only I had managed to cut off my hair, no one would have su suspected. The question that begs is this, why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain, we have clear evidence. I'm sure it needs no further clarification, the evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea that old man was really a young woman in disguise, did you? What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise. Naruhodo san, you're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing the facts with Mr. Shams. I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm not having fun or anything. This is strictly business, not. It's uh, okay. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part of Mr. Shom's deduction, shall we? The evidence that he's picked out doesn't fit the facts at all now. No, that's true. Given that Mr. Roylat is actually a woman, he or rather she can't possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Let's switch the evidence for something else, something that fits the facts as we now understand them. For some reason, this woman needed to try to hide her true identity. I feel as if I've heard a rat or heard about a young woman in a situation like that recently. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Oh, I can present? I'll, oh, present. Oh, present. Yes! Oh! No! Wait, how do I... How do I... How do I... Oh, oh, is it profile? Do we have a profile? My mistake? Do we have a profile? No, you... You know... You know... No. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. I know you all know what I was going to get at. He's an even mister, yeah. Where's my evidence then? Give me my evidence. Profiles? Do I have profiles? How do I... How? Hang on. Hmm, this is interesting. Have you found something relevant, Naruhodo-san? Well, no, I... I mean, it looks like it might be interesting. Can't read a single word, I'm afraid. No, nor can I. But look at this picture. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, you think? She's very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? I... I don't know. I can't make any sense of it. I'm glad you've noticed this article. Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. Oh, thank you. It pops up everywhere, this Mr. Sholmes. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavik. Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the fam famous dancer was reported missing. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. Why are our Russian names so hard to remember? It would appear that the woman it was in costume when she was found to be missing from her dressing room. Wearing the diamond tiara you see pictured which is worth some 20,000 rubles. Wow! Oh, how much is 20,000 rubles? I have no idea, but I'm quite sure it must be an unbelievable sum of money. Susato-san's uh, eyes are shining like diamonds themselves. The tiara is the property of the Novavik Ballet. It would seem that the director is beside herself with worry. Yes, I am not surprised. The company is most anxious to recover both Miss Pavlova and the valuable tiara. They have requested international assistance at all parts with sailings to Great Britain. Could this be another case of a Russian fleeing his or her country? 
It does seem to be the Russian thing to do. I'm not even going to dignify that with a re response, Mr. Naruhodo. The article about the ballerina has been entered. Okay, okay, so I can... Yes, here we yes. go. The evidence that reveals your true identity is of course the article about the ballerina. That's right. You've hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina of the Nova Vic Ballet disappears from Shanghai. It would appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of the Nova Vic Ballet's prima ballerina. So much crimes happening on this ship. Miss Nikolina Pavlova. Ah, be careful of the shears. Oh my god. Take the head off. I like a moon and and star earring. You're right. My name is Nina. I'm in Nikolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. A ballerina on the run. Cancel this. Now, as for my second conclusion, you are at this very moment on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. Yeah, you stole the tiara. But that suitcase was moving? Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. But the suitcase was moving, it's not a tiara. Unless the tiara is in the suitcase with something else. John so we see clies where the furtive clients let falls. Proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. So it's not, is it? That's a stowaway pet most likely. She's right in front of our eyes. So clearly she can't be inside that travelling case as well. No, that's right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? I can see I'm going to have to step in and fix a uh, year. You seem to look pleased, Naruhodo san. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Shelms? Stop it. Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Um, hmm. I mean, the tiara is here. Wow, look at this dazzling tiara. I've never seen I've never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, Naruhodo san, try it on. What? Me? Isn't it usually girls who wear tiaras? Wouldn't you like to try it on? Oh no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. What does it have to do with anything? Just wear it if you want it. Why does this tiara look familiar? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. Yes. I'm trying to... Let me in. The waste pit basket. Let's have a little look inside. Oh, the sun! It's poetic. It goes sifting through someone's rubbish, you know. Those eyes. She's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish now. However, these are special circumstances. I think exactly. We have no choice. Hardly anything in here at all. Oh well, that's a little disappointing. Really? I can't browse through? No? Tiara. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm supposed to point it, Tiara. Okay, my bad. <laughs> yes!
The proof of your crime is surely this terror. I believe this terror is won by on stage by dancers in the Novavik Ballet, is it not? Indeed. It would appear to be identical to the terror pictured here in this newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it is an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary... The crime you have committed is theft. Oh no! Yes, you've left your ballet troupe. Unlawfully taking their preci precious terror with you. Uh huh. Right? I have no one, no family, no friends. I'm all alone, and I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from... How do you say? An Earl of Prussia, it belongs to me. It looks exactly like the ballet troops one though. She must have been extremely lonely. Alright, I will tell you everything. There is no point in hiding now. To hiding it now. Come, come, let us not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. What do you mean? You have staunchly refused to open this traveling case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude that there exists some reason why you wish it to remain closed. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um... My dear girl, there is no sense in playing games with me. Nothing else skips my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case. Even before I have ever laid eyes on them. The boat? No? He's completely changed deck with his deduction now. I think Mr. Shones is adapting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Like, finally? Maybe, but why has he suddenly brought you a bookshelf? Just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case would have been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, it's true. So? Miss Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in the direction. I noticed it myself. There has to be another reason why she won't open her case. As we saw her in the same area. Whatever she has hidden inside that case should be revealed by following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. This, isn't it? There are the rules. These are the rules of passage for travel about this SS Buria. Passengers must not keep weapons, etc. etc. Pets are also strictly forbidden. There was exactly the same notice in our cabin too. I wonder what happens if you break the rules. Oh dear, I'm sure the punishment would be severe in our son. You'd probably be left to drift in the freezing cold ocean. Or shut inside a tiny wardrobe for days on end. So I've actually been serving time for weeks now, have I? Hi! Oh, sorry, wrong one. Yes! There we go. I tell you, I've been playing enough Ace Attorney. <laughs> yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. I'm sure I'm right. Is it a dog or a cat, I wonder? Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects. The pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from your carriage. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it. And it's moving, so... As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time. But no weapon or other dangerous item would move of its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova. Inside your traveling case. It's a pet. It's the last item. This is that's forbidden in the vessel's rules. A pet. Alright, open up. I want to see what 
it is. Show me the pet. Show me the pet. I want to see the pet. Let it out. It is uh, probably horribly stuffy in there and not lack of air. No, I am not Grimsby Roylot. My real name is Nikolona Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Later that same night, you stole about this vessel. Which couldn't have been easy. The Buria is a huge steamship with a vast crew. Could she really have snuck on board without being noticed? In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman. And you intended to severe all links with your past by severing your long hair. How'd you get into this room though? Yet to a woman, hair is no trifling matter. My personal recommendation is to live well alone. So if it was just you about to cut off your own hair. Who was it that let out that scream we heard from outside the cabin? The veritable tinkling of a bell, why none other than this young lady naturally? Yeah. More like a full set of pipes, if you ask me. <laughs> I was so scared when I ran away in Shanghai. I was sure they would come looking for me. That's why I decided to, how do you say? Disgust myself? So no one would recognize me. As a result, you transformed yourself into that questionable old man. I see. Put on the forehead and... Big beard? Then just before you came in here, I saw in the newspaper. Right on the page, there was a picture of me. I was so frightened. I couldn't stop him from screaming. I knew that if I didn't change my appearances completely, they would find me. So I decided to cut all my hair as fastly as possible. I picked up the scissors in my hand and... At a precise moment, we walked in through the annoyingly unlocked cabin door. Things happen like that sometimes, don't they? Things do indeed happen like that from time to time. Are those two even talking about the same thing? I have no idea. There's just one more thing I'd like to know. What's in there? Please, tell me. You were right, it is my dear friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. Take it out! Please, don't tell anyone if the captain finds out. If you say to any of the crew... The secret is safe with us, I assure you. But in return, we need your help. I'm still has in as much detail as you can master about the events of last night. Yes, alright. I'll tell you. Oh, this is getting good. Well, my little Mr. Naruhodo. Wasn't it something, Mr. Shom's great deduction? It's certainly something, yes. I'm just not entirely sure what. But at least Miss Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Indeed, it is. It is incredible. I am wanting. Oh, yes? What? Observe your wrist. No. <laughs> ah, your hands. I coughed again. What? But how? True to my word, I have restored your shackles. This is good at doing that. There is still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mister Narhodo. I'm sorry to say it can't be helped at the moment. Ha! Ah. Can't it? Really? Anyway, let's listen to what Miss Pavlova says. I can't go on not knowing. We have to find out what this pack of bandit Kazuma-sama what about in his diary really was. Yeah, no. No, I want the, I want the pet out. Get him out. Get her out. I don't know. What? Oh, 
I'll tell you what I know about last night, but please. You must not touch my things. How do you say it? But it's suffocating in there. As well as you should be, young man. What vulgar manners you have. No, let the pet brief. Poking around in a young lady's private belongings. Neither shall I allow it. Hypocrite. Alright, so I guess we're gonna end things here. I'd have a lot of things to edit. Otherwise, I have like two parts to edit. So until the next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.